Listen, a lot of people say, Dave, what'd you do this weekend? What does a star do? <laughs> no, nobody said that. But I did go to McDonald's. Uh, a lot of people say, I can't believe you go to McDonald's. And then I say, I went in. And then they go, wait, you in and ate there? And I go, yeah. I like it, man of the peeps, you know? <laughs> they think it's weird I go in, but I like it. But sometimes on the way in, you can pull these little shenanigans if you want. It's a little jerky, but I connect eyes with one of the cashiers, and I go, it's me and you, me and you. In the last second, I juke them out and go to someone else. <laughs> and it's, it's nothing, it's just something to kill time. And the guy's like, eh, you know, like, what does he care? He doesn't get commission. But <laughs> then in my next uncool move, I try to trip him up a bit when I order, because they're so odd. He's like, can I help you? I'm like, you know what, Steve? You can't. All right, here we go. And he goes, I go, quarter pound of cheese. He goes, beep, pop, boop, pop, beep. And then I go, Diet Coke, pop, beep. And I go, and fries. He goes, pop, pop, pop. And then I hit him with the curveball. I go, oh, you know what? No onions on that quarter pounder. He's like, Urgh. <laughs> Freeze up, freaks out, beat him, sweat, beep. <laughs> they have to shut the whole place down. We have a code blue situation. Code blue, scramble, scramble, store 29. And nothing can happen until the guy with the keys comes over. Mm. Oh, yeah. Nice to see you. No onions, no problem. Hey. Back to fries, loser. There you go. I know all the buttons. I initial all the voids. I got all the codes. <laughs> I'm the main guy. There's a reason I've been here six months. Yeah. This is not topical news, but I have a quick movie review. I saw Dolphin Tail. You know what that is? <laughs> this weekend on TV when I was uh, napping, and I have a few problems with it. <laughs> Just quickly, it's about a dolphin with a bad attitude who gets caught in like a lobster trap and then his tail gets hacked off and then he doesn't have the little uh, wiggle tail part, right? <laughs> Which, by the way, things could be worse, especially in this economy, but of course, he's immediately a dick about it. You know, most dolphins are cool. Not this guy, no. <laughs> He's bitching about <laughs> So, you know, they try to help them, the people at the zoo or wherever, I don't, I don't know. But they make this little plastic tail, you know, some popsicle sticks or something, but they help them swim. Yeah, it's not from the sharper image, but it'll get the job done, you know? And immediately, Dick Face goes over and starts banging it against the wall of the pool, you know, like an asshole. He's freaking out like, I hate it, I hate my fake tail. Full Jan Brady tantrum. And the guys are looking at him like, it's for your own good, dipshit, you know? <laughs> We're trying to help you. Like, they want you to, you know, they want to help them swim around in circles, even though it's boring, but that's all they do, you know? <laughs> but that's what you like, so we're helping you with your... Anyway, so after uh, that, they're gonna shut down the zoo or whatever the B story is, I didn't really know. <laughs> I didn't really understand the movie, but uh, then they have this expensive doctor come in and they make him a super nice tail that's tricked out, and they were even having a fundraiser for him. I'm like, hey, who cares? Put him to sleep, all right? Listen, no, no, because he doesn't want it. Remember, you don't want your tail. Remember, it's such a burden. Remember, you hated it? So anyway, they give him this big kick-ass tail. They put it on him. Naturally, cue idiot, smash into the wall, crash, break, I hate it, I hate the ocean, I hate everything. Full dolphin attitude. I'm like, hey, moron, have fun drowning because you can't swim without it. Do you get what's going on? Anchor, sinking, have fun drowning, you know. You know what I would do? I would hold up the fake tail and then a shot with the stuff that puts him to sleep and I'd be like, which one? <laughs> That's my ending of the movie. I'd be like, just point, which one? Let's do it. I didn't like that dolphin and I hope he's not in the sequel. Uh, anyway, long story short, this show is a lot like Dolphin Tail, but with less jokes. Okay, bye. <laughs> Learning has come a long way. I used to have to call people. Because I'm older, I used to have to call people. And when I was growing up, and that was even worse, there was a push button phone. And if you had to ask out a girl, you had to call her on the phone. It was horrifying. And you had to dial me, ma, mo. And then you'd stall me, ma, And then you have to wait and talk. And I go, hello? Hey, you don't want to go to the prom with me, right? You probably don't. Okay, bye. Um, horrifying. You have it so easy now. You, all right, I have to go to their locker and ask them out face to face. Sickening. You know, I'm like, I know the proms this week, and they're like this. <laughs> You'll never know when you text that face of them going, whoa, you're not gonna.
Sometimes when you go to a restaurant, I, I went to like a six star restaurant, one better. And you know, hostesses are very nice, but they like to strike up a little jibber jabber, you know, before you sit down. But it always goes nowhere because it's only 10 feet, you know? So she's like, Mr. Spade, we're so excited to have you. How was your week? And I go, oh, I had a little bit of a health scare. Here we are. <laughs> I go, I'm sure it's nothing. I, I, don't worry about me. I mean, uh, I'm, I'll get a CAT scan. I'll CC the whole host of Stan. But one time a couple years ago, I was on a date, and I was trying to puff up, and there's this snooty maitre d', and I'm waiting, and he finally goes, OK, right this way, ladies. And I go, <laughs> so nice. And I go, mm -hmm. So I start walking, but it sort of cooled me down a little bit in front of the girl. So I'm walking and I'm steaming toot. And I'm like, I'm getting so mad. I go, when he sees me, he's gonna freak out. And then I look and some guy's like, Joe Dirt. I'm like, yes, I look like a guy, exactly. <laughs> so I start going and I go, this guy's gonna fire himself. This is gonna be great. And then there's some stairs and he looks right at me and goes, watch your step, gals. And I go, again? I am a sir. I have a mustache, sort of. <laughs> anyway, eat at home. So I went to Magic Mountain this weekend, which is uh, an amusement park. Um, they call it Six Flags Magic Mountain. You don't need the Six Flags part. You know, you don't need two names. Magic Mountain is it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let me tell you something. In terms of marketing, Magic Mountain. It's hooky, it's catchy, all right? I know showbiz. Magic Mountain. Six Flags, who cares about that? How many flags are you in an amusement park? <laughs> no one says that. Six, oh, oh. Six out of 10? No, just six, just, it's nowhere, right? So Magic Mountain, the point is, it's definitely more mountain than magic. All right, <laughs> honestly, spoiler alert, I got some bad news. It's not even 50-50, it's barely magic, 99% mountain. <laughs> it's like cheese on pasta. Here's the magic part. Here's the mountain part. <laughs> Stop, no. More mountain. All mountain. If you don't believe me, ask my step counter. Because it was like, whee! It was literally like smoking. It was women seizing up all the gears in there. Because my pint sized little spindly noodle legs have never dealt with so much trauma. I took my 11 year old kid because I'm trying to be your hero. And, uh, but I also have a bad neck. So. She wants to go on all the rides. I'm like, we're here. Can we just look around at the scenery and enjoy life? I can't even get to focus on the rides because I'm looking at the Mount Everest they're sitting on. It looks like an inspirational poster of a mountain and me trying to think about it with the word determination under it, you know? So I get on one ride. I only did one, and it f***ed me up, of course, you know? It's not a fun little roller coaster. It's like, woo, it's scary. It's literally like, most of them are based on a car crash. You know what I mean? This one's called telephone pole. It's like 100 miles an hour, then wham! Like, stop on a dime, and everyone's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. People are walking up crying and calling lawyers. I'm basically slumped in the ride. They have to bring the jaws of life to get me out. You know. The worst part is I bought one of those scammer passes for VIPs, you know? One where you cut in front of the line. And at first, I'm whizzing by people. They're like, hey, they're all excited. Joe Dirt, bench warmers. And then, then you do it twice, they're still in line. They're like, hey, fuck you, dude. I'm calling the cops. So am I a hero? Who knows? I don't know. All right, bye. I went to some nice restaurant in LA, four stars. And I was sitting there thinking I was King Cock. And then, of course, they go like this. They're trying to whisk me out after a while. They're like, how was your night? These are the key signs. I go, it's still good. Did you have fun here while you were here and you had dinner? I go, I'm still eating. Yeah. And then they, the trick sent me a dessert. And I go, oh, thanks. Sent me a second one, swear to God. Get out. That's called Am's Gray. They give you 90 minutes. And then I look over, I see Fetty Wop. He's eyeballing my booth with his good eyes. I go, <laughs> I go you want it? He outranks me? Yes, he does, sir. I just happened at dinner last night. I went to a nice restaurant, and when I went to order shrimp, sometimes I say shrimps, you know, just <laughs> to see if the guy corrects me. It's kind of a dick move, but it's fun. And uh, <laughs> last night it went on forever. Because I go, hey, you guys have any shrimps here? And he goes, uh, yeah, we have shrimp. <laughs> he politely tries to correct me, but he doesn't really say it. He just says it right, you know? And then I go, oh, can I get like four shrimps? <laughs> and he goes, 
Yeah, we can do four shrimp. <laughs> and I go, can I get five shrimps? <laughs> he goes, yeah, you can have five shrimp. <laughs> shrimp. And then I go, there's no way you could do 10 shrimps. <laughs> could you jam 10 shrimps on a shrimp's cocktail? <laughs> and he goes, well, you can do as many shrimp as you like. Shrimp, pa. We can't do shrimps. We can do shrimp. He cracked. I knew he would. And that was my highlight. It's better at Cheesecake Factory. The guy's like, we got shrimps coming out our ass. What do you need? I started as a dishwasher first. That was my first job. I made three bucks an hour. So after an eight-hour shift, that's roughly, that's, it's not a lot. It's not, it's not too much. Uh, I never made it to waiter because my manager says, you don't got the stuff. I'm like, what stuff do you need? The busboy's harder, you know? I, I thought I should show my personality more. So uh, one day, uh, you know, I'd always talk to the tables, and he goes, hey, chatterbox. So I'm smoking inside. He goes, hey, don't talk to the customers. I go, they like it. And he goes, they don't, they don't. Just do your job. So Father's Day comes around, it's packed to the gills, you know. I got tables 60 through 70, which is the hardest section everyone knows at the restaurant. It's not for amateurs. Uh, <laughs> you know, they wouldn't put a rookie there. Because I'm good, because, you know, bus pulling, it's all back and spine. Um, so uh, the special of the day was shark. And so someone says to me, hey, how's the shark? And I go, oh, I have a motto. I don't eat them, they don't eat me. Right? <laughs> Can I talk to you? I go. I go over and he goes, what did I just say? What are you doing over there? I go, I don't know, killing? <laughs> and he goes, they don't like it. I go, oh, is that why I'm getting applause breaks? I'm a fan favorite. So I wave over and I go, I'll be here all week. And he goes, you're fired. I go, maybe not. <laughs> you guys, a lot of people come to me and they say, Dave, are you a redneck in real life? You know, because of Joe Dirt, I get that a lot. They think I'm some goat roper. But it's kind of true, because I grew up in Arizona, and one sort of proof of concept comes to mind. I had a brother, Brian, that would keep rattlesnakes in a cage in his bedroom. So in my house with three brothers, you know, we are my two brothers, we had five rattlesnakes and a tarantula in a cage. How do we get these rattlesnakes, you ask? Well, they're usually in our yard, you know, because everything's gravel in Arizona, so we'd see them. One day there's a big fatty out there, and we're trying <laughs> to catch him, you know. But, and people don't go, how do you catch a rattlesnake? It's not that hard. You have a two-gallon jug of, like, for milk, an empty one, and then we took two tennis rackets, and you pinch it behind the neck, and then you put the head in the milk thing, and it goes to the bottom, and it curls around, it doesn't know what to do. It can't get out. This is not foolproof, by the way. Is, <laughs> it's sort of a life hack, like, don't call me on it. Um, so we're out there scrambling to get this uh, rattlesnake, just to make it an even six, and then my drunk stepdad comes home, and he goes, what are you guys doing? And we go, we're trying to get this. He goes, you want to grab a rattlesnake? All you got to do is pick it up and you jam it in. And of course it bonk bit him right on the hand because we always knew there was a reason we weren't just picking it up and putting it in. It <laughs> bites you and they're poisonous. Um, everyone forgets that part. And so he goes, I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> I go, no shit, I bet you will. And then he went and laid down. He's like, whoa. And then he swelled up like the Michelin man. And he got all purple. And we had to wake him up and take him to the hospital. Anyway, moral of the story is rattlesnakes, not your friend. All right? My pet peeve, I have a pet peeve right now. It's uh, heat lamps in LA. I don't know if you eat out in LA, but they don't have heat lamps perfected just yet. I'm having a perfectly nice night in LA, but then the temperature plummets down to 71. <laughs> And everybody freaks out and demands they blast the heat lamp on the patio. <laughs> Let me tell you something, they don't blast them in Chicago till it's 15 degrees, right? <laughs> if you're going out to dinner and it's chilly and you're gonna sit outside in LA, wear a goddamn sweater or a coat, all right? <laughs> don't make the outside the inside, just sit inside. <laughs> the heater needs to be perfected, it has two speeds, zero or two million, <laughs> zero or melanoma, <laughs> zero or burnt to a crisp. Zero or burn unit covered in aloe vera with no insurance. <laughs> and when they turn it on, it's like, it's almost blowing your hair back. I'm like, hey, this is a great restaurant. Who ordered the burnt hair? <laughs> smells great tonight. I mean, honestly, why don't you just light a flare and hold it on the back of my neck? It dries you out so fast. You could light a match on my eyeball. <laughs> Girls always think it's hot when you're picking your nose and you start a brush fire in the valley. 
I find myself sucking for oxygen in these things after four minutes. <laughs> L.A., the only place where I need an oxygen snorkel with my crab cakes. <laughs> and then, meanwhile, on the inside of the restaurant, they're like, it's 71, can you crank the A.C.? <laughs> it's the opposite. I actually had a scary thing happen at the airport. I, uh, I was, uh, my brother, he goes, it's Christmas, and, you know, he, he, I, I'm standing there, and he, I'm about to leave the hotel, and he's like this, hey, I got you this, and he gives me, like, a used 10-inch knife, like a Bowie knife, <laughs> with a little bit of dried blood on it. I go, eh. <laughs> and then I just, I like put it in my bag. I go, what? what's up with that? And he goes, you like knives, you know? You're always at, <laughs> at dinner, you're like, can I have a knife? I'm like, well. <laughs> yeah, and then he goes, I go, where'd you get that? And he goes, it's crazy. There's a big gang fight at my apartment. <laughs> and so all the cops are looking over there. I'm like, what's going on? I see this knife right by my feet. And he goes, I kick it under the car, because I'm thinking, I go, Christmas. And he goes, yeah, Christmas. <laughs> so, by the way, I got to the airport, and they're like, Mr. Spade. I'm like, hey, fans. And they're like, step away from your bag. Four <laughs> cops come over. And they go, do not go to your bag. I go, all right, all right. And then I, he goes, swing. <laughs> is, is this yours? I go, oh, that's so funny. Um, <laughs> yes and no. It should be in a fucking evidence bag in a courtroom right now, but yeah. I ran out of gas on the way to work here, and it's the biggest day, of course, for a show, but I run out of gas. And the problem is, there's almost no reason to run out of gas in this day and age, because 20 years ago, if you did, people go, oh, that sucks, but now they're like, are you a fucking moron? How do you run out of gas? All the cars help you. Bung, bung, bung. 100 miles until you have only 40 miles until you're out of gas. Bung, bung, bung. 20 more miles, I would start taking this seriously. Six miles left. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Looks like you're heading toward the mall and not towards any gas station. <laughs> bung, bung, is this thing on? <laughs> Can you hear me? You need gas, dick. <laughs> bung, bung. One mile. Why am I even talking? Why do I waste my electronic breath on you? <laughs> and then I run out of gas and I hear it go, excellent. <laughs> What'd you say? Nothing, it's horrible. Let me guess, I'm calling AAA now from the car? Or do you want to call your mom? Or do you want to call a psychiatrist? I mean, what the F is wrong with you? You ran out of gas in 2019? I love this when the police in Tennessee are warning people not to flush drugs down their toilet. Who would? Because they say it might create meth-addicted alligators. I first read Meth Gator, and I thought it was a sequel, like a Joe Dirt. Number sure. Three. <laughs> easily, easily. Because nothing says America like no. a meth addicted gator. We're working on Crocodile, though. Oh, uh, <laughs> very similar. So close. <laughs> so I saw this one at 7 Eleven, and he's like, Can I suck your? <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, gator. That's and not... then he went and stole your car battery. <laughs> yeah, stole my car battery and then licked it. Either way, meth or an alligator, they're going to live uh, uh, under a bridge. Have you ever had girls that go, This is how you know you're dead in the water? You go on a, a girl and then you hit her up. And then you text her and she waits like four days. And then she goes, I'm the worst texter. <laughs> <laughs> then you, and I, I don't answer right away. I wait about 30 seconds. So first <laughs> and then I hit him again. And then a week later, she's like, hey, I'm so bad at texting. <laughs> I'm the worst. And then you take her out on a date. And then all night, she's over it like this. Harr, harr, harr. I go, oh. I see you got the hang of it.